Welcome back folks, and today we'll preview all the Swedish tank destroyers. Now in real life, these vehicles are not really TDs. They are either classified as infantry support, assault guns, or main battle tanks. But for the game's sake, for the game's linearity or ease of categorization, these vehicles are called tank destroyers. So just go with it, I guess. But we're getting a lot of vehicles. So 21 vehicles, 22. 21, whatever, but that's a lot for two lines. So one line is the hybrid line with the light tanks, the mediums, and then the heavies, and this tank destroyer line, quote unquote. So I'm pretty excited. But I already covered all the general contents and accessories with the Swedish patch. I also talked about the hybrid line as well. So click on the pictures to watch. But today we'll finish up with the Swedish tank destroyers. So here is the tech tree yet again. Now it's only 9 TDs because the tier 1 is shared. So the STRV FM21, the Swedish built version of the German LK2 is the common denominator at the start. Then we're moving on to the PV LVV FM42, the IKV72, the SAV M43, IKV103, IKV65 version number 2. And IKV-90 version number 2, type B version number 2. The UDES-03. And finally, the Zero series of the STRV-103. And finally, the production model of the STRV-103, the S-Tank. So this line will be highly popular because the tier 10. <laughs> A lot of players will just play this line for this vehicle. So... It's the epitome of Swedish tank designs because in 1997, they retired this vehicle for the STRV 121 and 122, which is the Leopard 2 A5. So that's German. But this is the epitome of Swedish tank designs. So a lot of players will play the line just for this vehicle. But here is the tier 2, the PV LVV FM42. It stands for Panzerwarns Luftwarns Vaughn. So basically, anti-tank, anti-aircraft tank. So it's an experimental mini SPG. So they want to have both capabilities of anti-tank and anti-aircraft, but it's a hard to find vehicle because not a lot of info is known about this thing. And it was never given a proper name, so Finding records about this thing, yeah, this thing is pretty hard. So, I don't know the actual armor or the main armament of this vehicle, but it kind of looks like a 37mm Bofors cannon from this picture. It can also carry 20mm Madsen auto cannon, I presume. So, based on early models of Swedish light tanks from the other line, that's the likely armament for this vehicle. Should be a crew of 3 to 4. No armor, about 10 millimeter. Top speed should be about 40-ish kilometers per hour based on the L60 and other light tanks. So should be quite fast with decent running gear. Horsepower should be about 150, weighs probably around 10 tons or less. And horsepower per ton ratio should be about 13 to 15 or so. So tier two, take the shorter. All right, it's nothing fancy. All right. Tier 3 is the Infantry Cannon Vaughn. So the Infantry Cannon Tank, so Infantry Support Gun, 72. Designed by Landsberg and Bofors from 1949 to 1953. So basically they want a SPG, Light Infantry Support Assault Gun. So initially from a tankette, but they mounted the STRV M42's 75mm as assault gun for this vehicle. So basically imagine that vehicle as assault gun. So yeah, armor is meh. at best 18.5mm, side armor is 7, rear armor is 5, has the same 75mm from the STRV M42. It can also carry a derp gun, 105mm derp gun. So this could be a tier 3 Hetzer with no armor. So, yeah, derp power. 105mm derp at tier 3. Insane. I mean, think about it. The T46 
has a 76 millimeter, the Russian light tank, has the alpha of a tier 4, tier 5, of a tier 5 medium. It doesn't have the reload, but the alpha is pretty scary. This thing is tier 3. It carries 105 millimeter derp. That's like the Hetzer at tier 4. It, it basically one shots. <laughs> a lot of stuff. It's also pretty fast. 57 kilometers per hour with 145 horsepower. So horsepower per ton ratio of 8 ton is 18.13. So it's quite fast as a derp gun. So go shotgunning. <laughs> With this thing, holy crap, that would be insanely fun. Just go shotgunning low tiers, just like dead. That's crazy. Tier 4 is the SAV M43, so influenced by the German Sturmgeschutz and the Russian SU series. So the, I'm not going to pronounce that, but the Storm Artillery Vaughn, the M43 version of a Sturmgeschutz-ish, is basically a Panzer 38. T that they rearmed with 105 millimeter derp gun. So this is the Swedish version of a Hetzer. So taking the Panzer 38T, modifying it into a derp gun version of a assault gun. So yeah, the Swedish Panzer 38T, Swedish Yak Panzer 38T. There we go, the Hetzer. So armor is only 50 millimeter at the front, 50 at the sides, 50 at the rear. Main armament is a 75mm, so the single shot, small caliber, compared to the derp gun, so, yeah, Hetzer. Top speed is 45 km per hour, decent horsepower per ton ratio-ish, but compared to the tier 3, yeah, it's not going to shotgun, but still pretty much one shots a lot of vehicles, so decent enough. Tier 5 is the IKV-103, so it's an improved version of the IKV-72 alongside with the refitted IKV-102. So these are the three brothers, but this basically has the same derp gun as well. So you can easily go one-shotting people. So share the same speciality with the IKV-72, I forgot to mention, but these vehicles have 20 degrees of gun depression. <laughs> so let's go back to the IKV-72. But this thing, oops, is also fast it's also pretty good revving up with the horsepower per ton ratio, but I forgot to mention with 20-ish to 25 degrees of gun depression. <laughs> wow! Shotgunning people left and right, but same with the IKV-72. The IKV-103 is the tier 5 version with pretty much the same characteristics, so it's pretty fast. No armor whatsoever, so top speed is 60 km per hour with a good engine. Horsepower per ton ratio is 25.56. <laughs> wow, shotguns people without the, with a gigantic derp. Now, it's tier 5, so you could see tier 7s with the likes of Tigers, T-29s, IS tanks, but just play with high explosive if you're in that situation. But it's an interesting vehicle. I would like to see how Wargaming will balance the speed and derpiness of this vehicle. So, pretty exciting. At tier 6, we have the IKV-65 alternate number 2. Now, it's basically another blueprint vehicle, quote-unquote. They did build a prototype, a small-scale model of it right here. But, yeah, it looks like a <laughs> mail, mail cart, mail car, mail van, whatever you call those things. So, yeah, it's square, it's boxy, it's like a cyan. Cyan cars. <laughs> Cyan cars are disgusting. They look like boxes. What the hell would buy them? Ugh, gross. Alright, no more dissing on Cyan brand. But yeah, it's a decently fast, no armor vehicle. So, another Swedish request for a new infantry support, light SPG. So, there were multiple versions, and it was highly favored, but they did not like the this version that much, so they chose a different version from Haglund's, Haglund's. so based because of the PBV 302 APC, so it looks kind of like the APC with the bottom half of the hull, so okay, has no armor, only 10mm at best, carries a semi-automatic 90mm L53, crew of 4, 
good top speed, 60 kilometers per hour, weighs about 11 tons with 215 horsepower engine. So the horsepower per ton ratio is quite good, 19.55. So pretty decent, but it's boxy. So be aware, but it's not that big, I believe. So this should be the same size as the FE 304, but should be a little bit smaller than the FE 304, the current version, the gigantic fat version. So it's not, I mean, should be a little bit smaller than that, but we'll see. At tier 7, it's the IKV 90 Type B. So another paper tank, but this is basically starting to become the S tank like of designs because this is not from Landsberg, it's from Bofors. So you can read originally designated as IKV NY. So rather than IKV 90, but it's another infantry support light SPG. So yeah, it was shelved, so this is a paper tank, but there were different versions of it as well. So, no armor, less than 20mm, has the Bofors 90mm L53 semi-automatic. I believe it could fit a better version of the 90mm, maybe the IKV-91's 90mm. So, that's the one with the turret that I showed you like a few months ago. But, yeah, not a lot of info is known about this vehicle. Top speed should be around 60 kilometers per hour. Should have about 15 tons with a 300 horsepower engine. So horsepower per ton ratio should be around 20. So fast, rear mounted, assault gun. But it's not really assault gun, it's ambush TD. Like the SU-100M1 at tier seven. It's fast though, really fast. At tier eight is the UDES-03. The UDES is actually a group of engineers and designers and analyzers for a better vehicle. So they're not really a tank denomination per se. So this vehicle is basically a smaller baby version of the STRV 103 because they want to find a smaller capability, a smaller tank like the STRV 103, but doesn't require that much resources. So this is basically a baby version of that with less armor, the same gun and relatively the same speed. So just as fast. So top speed should be about 60 to 70 kilometers per hour with the Bofors 105 millimeter L74 rifle gun. Armor at best is 40 millimeter with good sloping. So it could bounce a few shots, but it's only 40 millimeter. So 120 millimeter guns will overmatch the armor. So most guns at tier eight are 120. So yeah, just don't rely on the armor, but it's quite fast. Desire horsepower per ton ratio based on the tons is about 30. So this thing should be quite fast. So yeah, the main reason that this vehicle was canceled alongside with the other tanks, the tier seven and tier six was because Sweden just used the STRV 121 and 122 when the time came. So, yeah, when the time came, just use the Leopard 2A5. So, these vehicles were, you know, shelved. At tier 9, we have the Zero Series of the STRV 103. What's the Zero Series? It's the initial production model of the S tank. So, initially, you have the S Series, which is the prototype version then this version, then the A series, and then the B series. So this is the pre-production model of the S tank. Has less armor, not as good, 30 to 40 millimeter, but at very good angles. And it could carry a 20 pounder, uh, Swedish built 20 pounder version of the British gun, or the 105 with an autoloader. So top speed is 50 to 60 kilometers per hour with a Rolls Royce British engine as well as uh, two engines. So working together with the specially rotatable gun thing. So they're a fixed mounted gun system and weighs about 30-ish tons. So horsepower per ton ratio, ratio should be 18 or so. So yeah, it's like the zero or A series. No, 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 like the S series, my bad. So S, then zero, then A, then B, then C. So it's like the S series, the initial prototype versions, but not a lot of info could be recovered. So 
I could only guess, but it's a taste for the tier 10 mostly. So here you can see the size, it's a small tank, very small compared to the Centurion, the STRV81. And here is, if you can see this correctly, the PBC 302, I believe. So the APC 302 right here. Yep, it looks like the boxiness of the 65 alternate number two on the bottom, but yeah, small detail. And finally, the final boss, the STRV 103. B version, the real production version of the S tank. So the original version, the A version turned out to be underpowered. So not enough horsepower to move the 30 ton vehicle. So they increase the horsepower with a better engine. They give the suspension a tweaking. So better gun depression and elevation and better armor. So 60 millimeter to 70 millimeter at 12 degrees from the horizontal. So that's 288.6 to 336.7 millimeters effective which is quite good but I'll talk about this later on so we'll talk about the final opinions and stuff but yeah that's pretty good sloping has the automatic bofors 105 millimeter L74 rifle with the gun you can also mount from history a modified British L7 with longer barrel L7 the L7 was Originally L52, but they increased, or L51, but they increased it to L62. So longer barrel, all the good stuff. Crew of three, top speed of 60 kilometers per hour with two engines for 40 tons. So the horsepower time ratio is around 18.39, which is still pretty good, but not as crazy as the ones with 25 or 30. So still pretty decent, but it has the armor now. So here are the final thoughts and opinions about the Swedish tank destroyers, quote unquote. So very fast, very light. So as you can notice, all vehicles have no armor and no weight. So just don't touch anything. <laughs> but other than the S tanks, mostly weigh under 15 tons. Other than the S tanks, no armor, glass cannons. Some of them should have the same reverse speed as the forward speed. So you can just reverse out of situations which is quite handy for haul down or just running away so like the crusader sp spg the tier 7 british artillery so you can run backwards and still shoot <laughs> still pretty fun so strength is gun depression gun selections with autoloaders high mobility and insane camouflage value because these vehicles are short very short as you can see with the Centurion composition composition comparison. So yeah, it's a small vehicle. So small vehicles have better camouflage rating. A good example of this is the TOG 2 has better camouflage than the KV2. Reason the KV2 is taller. So the camouflage rating is based on the height of the vehicle. So for the S tank <laughs> Yeah, just camouflage rating is insane. So basically E25 of tier 10 TDs because currently the Grill 15 sucks with the camouflage. The no armored FE4005 sucks with no camouflage. You do have some camo for the objects, the object 263 and 268, but this thing should just beat those thing out of the water because it's even smaller. It's not even a heavy tank chassis. It's a medium tankish or even light tankish chassis. So yeah, pretty awesome. So armorless, conditional armor for the S tanks, and it's pretty light. So armorless for the low tier, expected. They're only like 10 tons, right? So no armor, but it's conditional armor. And what do I mean by conditional armor is you have to angle it correctly. So if you unangle your vehicle, so if initially your tank is like this with the 12 degrees, of sloping so that's pretty good but if you have the hydraulic pneumatic suspension tilted wrong ways you unslope the frontal armor so it's only 60 millimeter to 70 millimeter and you will get pinned by high penetration guns so it's very conditional and it's 60 millimeters to 70 millimeters against high caliber high explosive shells from artillery so getting hit from a 
210 millimeter howitzer from a GW E100, you're dead. <laughs> or getting hit by the T92. How big is that gun? 200 millimeter plus or something? You're dead. So it's conditional armor. So just do not rely on it. A lot of players are saying, ooh, it's amazing sloping. I agree. It is pretty good sloping against normal tanks. Hell yeah, you can defeat their shells. You can defeat APCR like crazy since the normalization is only 2 degrees. But if you unslope it or if you point the mouse down and somehow the angles of the tank move with your mouse and you unslope the armor, you get penetrated. If you get hit by artillery, you get dead. So conditional armor. So it's not like the T110E5 where it's thick and it's rounded and sloped so this is only slope so it's conditional trust me on it but do not go ramming stuff don't even touch anything because low weight of the low tiers it, it weighs less than 15 ton average across the tech tree <laughs> it's like playing with the elc everywhere just don't don't get touched so there's also a problem with the new equipment and aiming mechanics because at high tiers all the guns are fixed, literally fixed, bolted to the chassis. You have to move the chassis to move the gun. So it's a new mechanic, can't talk, new mechanic that they're testing out. But I like to see how that works because the equipments also are affected by this system. Since camouflage net, binoculars only work if you do not move the hull. But you have to move the hull to aim at stuff. So basically, camouflage net and binoculars are useless. Unless unless they fix it for some reason. I don't know how they're going to do it for the Traverse. But yeah, that's that would be OP for other tanks like the E25. So I don't know how that's going to work. And yeah, it's autoloader. So gun rammer will not fit. You cannot also fit a vertical stabilizer, tank destroyers. And enhanced, enhanced gun lane drive is kind of pointless because the gun's fixed mounted. So it's like a recoilless rifle, right? Because the gun doesn't move. So how the hell do you have a enhanced gun lane drive for a stuff that doesn't move? Also, the accuracy, how's that going to work out? Or the aiming speed, the aim time, or the dispersion on the move, how's that going to work? Because is it going to base off only the chassis? Who knows, but... A lot of stuff and a lot of question rises from the fixed mounted gun. So, eh. But these vehicles are ambush vehicles. So, basically, Waffen Triggers that trades Alpha for speed and autoloaders and camouflage. Or high tier Waffen Triggers, like not the Grail 15, <laughs> like the Panzer IV or the Romtel Borsig. But you know what I mean. So, it's ambush vehicle. It, Features guerrilla tactics, so no 1v1. Try not to 1v1. Shoot, then run away. Reverse out of the way. So that's how you should play Swedish vehicles. But is it worth it? Well, wait for the full stats and the mechanic uh, discussion, the mechanic uh, details coming soon. So don't put it off. But a lot of players will just play the line mainly for this vehicle. So it's iconic. It's the epitome of Swedish tank design, so a lot of players will get it. And I'm very interested because it looks pretty from a, you know artistic standpoint and the mechanics as well. So with this mechanic, we could have some other type of vehicles and mechanics like the hydro pneumatic suspension with the tilting also applies to the other vehicle, namely the STB-1, the Type 74 prototype. So that thing could also have the hydro pneumatic suspension with better gun depression from 10 degrees to 12 or so, I believe. But yeah, new stuff, always fun. So there you go, folks. All the tanks, all the coverage, but I'll talk about all the stats coming soon. So this week, some of the mediums have their stats revealed and it's like what I predicted from the previews. So they do have good gun depressions. Some vehicles have good guns, but we'll talk about it. We'll cover it soon. So stay tuned for the leak videos. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.